Lawless Action is brought to you by Zeculine and the associate sponsors. We're at the Swatkorps International Raceway just outside Pretoria on Overcast Day, which will help keep some of these older motor cars cool. Among the more than 300 entries are true classics, some of which date back nearly 60 years, and you name it, they're here at Swatkorps. Cars that come from the James Dean and rock and roll era of the 50s and 60s. And the Arena Motorsport has also launched a brand new concept. The South African version of the stick, Mr. Z, will be here for the first time. I wonder who's behind that dark visor. First up on the program are some hairy cars from the 60s Big American Saloons with, uh, as you see, Fanky de Matei, he qualified the car for Jerry van Black, Mark de Toy, Saul van Ameva, and Paola Cavalieri. Thomas Falconer, in his only second race in the country, is there and looking very good in this race. It's going to be a 10-lapper, 33 cars in the lineup, and uh, we're underway. The Chevy versus Ford in the front. Ford Mustang takes the lead into turn one, and you can see that Franco de Matteo did all the work, but it's now Derek van Blerk in the car who has to keep Sorrel van der Merwe, Mark de Toy, and Paolo Cavalieri in that brand new Chevelle on his tail. Up the inside, Falkner looking for a way fast. Whoa, already onto the dirt. Two corners into his racing career. This is the second race, we say, and he nearly spun it in that pack. Not the thing to do, but he's still there and following around this very fast corner. And it's black lines all the way around the sweepers. They get onto the back straight. Yeah, all right, those Hoosier tires working double time. Now they come into age of sweep. Now look at this. Cavalieri under big pressure. Mark the toy in the 27th day. Tone of each machine. What's fast? And he's all over the back of that brand new Chevelle. Heading up towards the top of the hill. Are we going to see some late breaking? Sorrel starting to pull a bit of a gap here. Late breaking and onto the brake markers now there comes mark he sneaks up the inside cavalieri keeps it wide or oh, he could have turned in on there but he didn't and he gave mark enough room for him to go through and this is the debut race of the cavalieri car it's a chevelle he comes from a tana does cavalieri and he's really got a racing program going this year behind him we've got derek van Breck, the leader Saul van der Mevesik. arm up there from mark to toy there's a safety car in the circuit they'll all slow down and get into single file and wait till the circuit is cleared for racing Looks like there's been a problem out on the circuit somewhere. There is the car parked inside. And it looks like it's Keegan Ward who's put it here just at turn two. So safety car boards are out. Sorrel will have to tuck in behind. But what's going to happen now, Rog, is the field is going to close up right to where they were at the start. And we're going to have a restart of all this action. And Sorrel needs to get right on the tail there. They're behind that focus of Derek van Black. He's on the left-hand side in that very fast Mustang. Right, the Land Rover, the trusty Land Rover pulls out, please, uh, Who's up, King Ward's Cortina? We've got Peter de Toy with us from Swatko. Peter, what a field you've gathered here of all makes and sizes. Yeah, tremendous field, tremendous spread. Uh, it's great to see those little Mini Coopers out there in, in force. And one of the loves of your life, of course, has been the A35. You've always liked A35. Chapo's there too, yeah. yeah and it's uh, Stuart Gregg in their car. Storm clouds are gathering in the background. Fortunately, he's staying away from us. Mark Tatoy has gone to third. The Chevelle, that's a very quick motor car. Well prepared, also part of Peter's stable. And then we've got Alan Poulter. With Faulkner and Brian Rowling Jr. He comes over from Dubai to race his father's motor car as they come into this corner. There's the Brian Rowling's got original colours. The Grove uh, Jaguar looking very good. So it's all about in the front there, Derek van Vleck, Saul van Amir in that galaxy, and look at the back lines going down around Egypt corner. American muscle here in full effect, Rog, there's no doubt about it. Look at Sorrel having to work double time. Oh, we're playing around with the steering wheel too. He said to us uh, in the interview, and when you get into this big beast, by the time he gets about the third or fourth lap, you're actually just a passenger. You hang on and let the car do its own thing. Well, I want to tell you, you can hear that car almost out. It's a seven liter motor, and then look at the Chevelle going the inside of Mark Tatoy. Paolo Cavalier is one competent driver, he's normally in a Ferrari 250, but this is his first experience of American saloons, and he's putting up a great show. To stay with Mark, the toy number one is good in this sort of company. You can see that uh, Van Blerk is a bit worried. He's trying to open up a bit of a gap now on Van Merwe and Detroit. Detroit's looking for a way past. He wants to get past Sorrel. Remember the last time out, he actually beat Sorrel in the Galaxy. So it's uh, a bit of a vendetta that they have to resume here. And let's see which is going to be better, the Chevy, or are we going to see the Galaxy on the second row? Not too far behind in the Packers American Studio Baker. We've got Ian Schechter returning to motor racing. I haven't been in a car for 21 years, and I'm driving two big American cars that I have a huge handful, but having a lot of fun so far. That Studebaker is definitely a handful, as you say, but uh, I'm sure that you and Sorrel are going to have some fun in game. Uh, I mean, Sorrel's a bit quicker than me this time, but if he laps me, then we'll have a bit of fun. <laughs> so you're going to wait for him? <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to beat the cars that are in front of me at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's a different class anyway, but uh, I'm in the middle of the pack, and I should have a bit of fun, yeah. Really making a comeback. He drives this stud, another American car, and also rides motorbikes. 
is going to have. He says it's fairly scary on two wheelers to come back into that. Well, she just picked up there that Mr. Z was giving Schechter a bit of a run for his money. And speaking of a run for the money, here we go. What's happened at the front? Van Blurk's fallen down to third place. He's made a mistake somewhere on the track. And Sorrel is in front. That's to the joy of the crowd. They come to see him in their hordes. To see Sorrel in front of him, was still the icon of Savick and Motor Aid. But Mark Tatoy is beating him here at Swat Corps. It's on to him now as they come down around. You see how Sorrel knows how to uh, keep his part of the road there. Going through in the inside is Derek Van Black. He moves up to second spot in the Mustang. He's up from Cape Town. The Chevelle is fourth with Cavalieri. And there's Faulkner coming along as well. Oh, that's an immaculate prepared machine, and it made Sorrel look a bit amateur there. He came up the inside, Van Blurk getting past, and so did the toy. Look at this. They're coming up on back markers. Look out, Alpha. It's American muscle in your rearview mirror, and I would just move completely off the track. And it just fills your inside, your inside mirror. That's what yeah. you just see big American car. Sorrel's car just idles on. Listen to the power of that motor car. Oh, he's got a slipping clutch there. He's not putting all the power through the back wheels there, Peter. Well, the clutch is slipping. We had big guy replace the gearbox and the diff on Friday night, so it looks like the clutch is just not gripping properly. And Sorrel needs all that power to get on the road. There's a little angler there of uh, Paul Pereira. It's flying along in class Y. We've got Gary Stacy coming along with Cortina. There he is. Mike Nellin's a little mini. Mike Nell will see in a Ferrari a little bit later. He goes very well and drives that mini uh, particularly well and very aggressively. Here's Sorrel now getting surrounded by that. The Chevelle, Peter, that's a new car for you. It's got a bit of a history. Three cars to build a one car. It's based on the smoky unique car that actually never raced in NASCAR. It was so illegal. We've made <laughs> it legal, but it's actually a magnificent motor car. Uh, it's taken a lot of time and money. John 10 built the car, and it's going to be very competitive. Major force in Legends Racing. Well, i got to say it's competitive already. And uh, Thomas Faulkner from the Sunday Times, you can read him on a Sunday on motoring there. He's starting to shape. Sol gets passed by the Chevelle. That is one very quick car. Superbly quick, actually, and Paolo Cavalieri is really giving it a workover. But still, with a slipping clutch or not, Sol knows how to handle Just listen to that big motor out. What are they lever to? Lever to, Peter? Six, 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 six and a half thousand revs. Right, there's Falcon now taking on Sol van der Meer. This is going to be a big day in his life. If he's able to pass him, is he able to do it? Not this time, he's not, but that Mustang is also very quick indeed. How do you get past seven tons of machinery when Sorrel van der Merwe is behind uh, it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you notice there's a dent already on the left back with the fender. Checkered flag comes out and Van Blurk takes the checkered flag. Mark de Toy will come through in second place in the Chevy. So a great drive from de Toy to stay ahead of Sorrel van der Merwe. But I think van der Merwe is going to drop down to about fifth spot because Falconer pipped him at the line. Well, Mark de Toy did in fact get second in a very fast Chevy Paolo Cavalieri. Thomas Falconer in his second drive, we say Sorrel. Brian Rowling's Peter drove and Zed came through in eighth spot. The second race for the Atana Pre-66 Legends of the Nine Hour. This is the heavy metal back on Swat Corps. Here's the start. Mark de Toy round the outside of Sorrel for Omeva with Paolo Cavalieri holding station in third spot. It must be the fact that he's got a number 27 on his car that he's going so fast. It's off and a move around the outside. Look at that. A nice start there once again from Faulkner. He's on the inside and, it's, well, it's going to be Battle Royal resuming here at the Arena of Motorsport. You hear the speed that Sorrel changes gears. That engine just idles on. It's got so much torque and he's hanging on. But that Chevy's got legs. There they go. The cement dropped during the TT. Sorrel second, then Paolo Cavalieri. Then we've got Alan Potter. Great job by him. Faulkner's in... Uh, fourth or fifth spot and then we've got who's that behind them we've got uh, Brian Rowling Jr as we say comes over from Dubai and Frank Copping that little Renault is hanging in there with those big V8s can you believe a Renault door feed is all over the back end of two Fiat Mustangs <laughs> it's an amazing sight to see here we go come on Schechter what are you doing down there bud get that car going number 141 in the inside no, that's just to say I wonder who's in that car Rog we're not allowed to tell that because when we don't know he's going to lose it and maybe because he's actually going to lose it we shouldn't say who's actually in that car no <laughs> he's letting the stick down Chevelle comes through third Poulter's in fourth he's lost the spot there to the uh, Chevelle of Paolo Cavalier the Atana car then it's uh, Thomas Falk now I must say impresses me there's no doubt he can drive this because Frank Copping's neck then it's uh, Peter Grove in the Jag that Mark II Jag beautiful looking motor car Here's a mark to toy, Sorrel van der Merwe, Paolo Cavalieri, the Volvo's Alan Poulter. Now he turned out, God, that's the one they all fear. It can stay with V8 on most circuits. It's got such a great turn of pace around this circuit particularly as well, Roger. has been uh, one of the top competitors in all historic and classic racing that Peter de Toy puts on. And Pete, once again, a massive field of cars here in this uh, pre-66 field. Well, that was the characteristic of that period, you know. I think if people raced anything that had four wheels, it was a saloon car. And 
can see it today. I mean, the Alphas, the Lawson, the 35s, the Fiat Bath, the Cortinas, the Anglias, they're all there. You know, that shatters me, Peter. That little A35, which I know you, you love, is, is handled so well. You I wouldn't know. think it did. No, well, they're very special. Uh, the suspension was brought in from England from the car that actually won a Goodwood a couple of years ago beat the Jags. That's a very specially set up motor car. Look at the camber angle on that Plymouth Fury that's being that's driven that's by Henry Vault. Eight is Andy to low. There's a man from the past. Yeah. Always race minis. He's into Renault as well. And uh, Henry Krunevald is battling with that big Fury. That also comes from down the belt. Carl Pino's uh, set up down there. Uh, and uh, SP Racing. And uh, he's staying with that. Uh, beetle on the inside there by the way is Martin Roddle which stays with most cars on the circuit. Uh, he certainly does. And uh, going back to uh, picking up on Andy Turlow there, him and his brother Graham have actually stepped out of the motor industry. They're in the bicycle industry now, bringing in mountain bikes from overseas. So uh, a big change around there. They had Auto Extra as their Renault dealership. Then they had it as a bike dealership. And now still racing in the minis that they love so dearly. Oh, now he's got time to race the minis. He didn't have someone out the auto exactly. dealership. So we're really <laughs> pleased to have him back. He must and be the, the car's beautifully prepared. He must be the youngest looking 80 year old around. Oh, not too bad. They, 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 but his boot's they, pretty good. Eh? <laughs> Graham should be in one of the cars as well, though. I think Graham and Andy should be having some fun out there, and not only just Graham, so it's all good. Uh, Andy's not 80, by the way. He's a very fit car, I've got to say. <laughs> Frank Copping's little car. Here it is. Look, I mean, that's ridiculous. But the cars are slowing down. There must be a safety car. You can't live with these sort of motor cars with a little, uh, with a little good uh, door theme. And under that bonnet, it's just pipes, and he's got that car so sorted out. Kenny G coming through the field nicely there as well. Roger's just moved up ahead of the Jags. So Grove had no answer. It's now the Dauphine who's under attack. And if you look in the rearview mirror and you see these big wings sticking out the back, you must be th thinking to yourself, where did he come from? And those cars didn't have the greatest brakes. Cavalieri is going pit with. selection problem, but they fixed it. So he went out a little bit later. Oh, that's a pity for him. But he's really given a good account of himself first time out, eh, Peter? Yeah, it's been also been a big wake-up call. <laughs> There's no such thing as suspension setups on these cars. That's where they were. And that's like he gets on his Ferrari. I mean, it's just nothing like that. But they're enjoying it. Ian Schechter was enjoying it. I was talking to him in, uh, uh, afterwards, and he was saying he thoroughly enjoyed driving these motor cars. Uh, must be a big, big field. Oh, Bath about to be overtaken here. You can see Detroit going around the outside. He's left side off on a Merva, although on a Merva should be still finishing up in second place if he can keep it all together. You can see that there is a battle no, rule on the hands here. They replaced the gearbox uh, of that uh, Galaxy again between the brake, but there still seems to be a problem with that clutch. That clutch is slipping. No, it's got just too much power. Can't get it seven litre motor, Peter. Well, more than that. A bit heavy on the it's, almost, it's almost seven and a half. <laughs> I, I love that. I love the South African term. It's a bit more than seven litres. Yeah, seven and a half, maybe. <laughs> it's probably about a nine litre motor. They never tell you. Stuart Gregg's ahead of the soul. Taking it easy. Come Jerry Spahn's. That's an absolutely immaculate little Fiat. I've got to say, it is in beautiful condition. There's not a drop of dust on it. And he looks after it like a museum piece. He's building another one too, he tells me, so. Right, it's, uh, it's Mark Detoy. He's going to win this one. There's no doubt about it. Nobody's in the league as he gets the flag. Here he is, another win for Mark Detoy. He's had a great run of success in this uh, Chevy, a real uh, bootlegger a Chevy, if ever there was one. Yeah, certainly no doubt. So off on a move in second place. Falconer in third. Nice drive from Alan Poulter and Brian Rowlings to finish up the top five. Good days racing. Moving on to the Legends of the Nine Hour, sponsored by Etana. What a magnificent field of motor cars. That is one of my favorite cars in the whole world, that Chevelle. And on board that one at the moment is Jonathan Detoy. As we wait for the lights to go out, it's a rolling start. And Henny Krunewald out in front with Mark Detoy going at it. Side by side, Krunewald gets the drop. And Detoy slots in on the 27, right on his tail. The Biscayne looking superb. Yeah, but don't forget the small capacity cars. On this tight little track, they really give these oaks a run for their money. Yeah, Brian Rowlings will be in there, there's no doubt about it. And of course, Thomas Faulkner, just behind them comes the 13 Chevelle of Jonathan Detoy. Then a whole gaggle of cars. Daniel Barner, Frank Copping, the man we just saw spin out in the previous race. Of course, Barner coming from Zimbabwe as they come down the back straight for the first time. Henny Grunewald with some pressure coming ready. There comes the Chevelle up the inside. Is he going to get through? The triple one car there is Thomas Faulkner. I wonder if he's going to have uh, any problems during this race because it is a tighter circuit. The bigger car is going to be difficult to get past with the slightly more powerful cars, I should say. But uh, onto the brakes. Jonathan Detoy slowing up into fourth place. Faulkner's not letting him have it easy, though, is he? No, and you've got to watch Faulkner. He actually qualified on pole and then was dropped down to fifth, I think, to start. But uh, he is a man on a charge. He has got pace around this circuit, that is for sure. Big pity that we don't have the other contenders in this normal uh, historic tour at this particular event. It would be Sorrel in the big red one. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it up here, but uh, that car is in the stable and will be out, I'm sure, during the tour at some stage. One of the nicest cars out there, of course, is Brian Rowlings' Lucky Strike Mustang. We caught up with him at trackside. 
No, this we built up. We found it in Benoni. It was had chickens on it. And really? I put water in it. The water ran out. I put fuel in it. The fuel ran out. And we started it from there. That's and we built good. it up. But we always there. And we uh, enjoy it. We enjoy it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and Brian, and, uh, I mean, the condition of the cars are good. Are you never had trouble with the No, it runs very, very nicely. You put a lot of work into it? No, not too much. You know, it's got a Brian Cook engine. You know how those run? Oh, they run very well. Yes. So it's been very reliable and uh, we've enjoyed it over the years. What? Certainly enjoying it at the moment in third place. Henny Krunewald has not been bettered yet. Mark the Toys tried. The Chevy Biscayne is definitely taking a bit more strain over that Plymouth Fury. And the Esprit Racing Boys have found something to make that car work. It wasn't a great handler out of the box, but all of a sudden, it now seems to have the pace at the front. But as I say that, commentator's curse has nailed me. And the Biscayne hits the front for the first time. Detoy ahead of Henny Krunewald. Here we've got Brian Rowlings, Jonathan Detoy, and Thomas Faulkner. Little battle built behind there. 89 car, Frank Copping, going head-to-head -head with Barna. I think Frank learned from his spin last race and is now... Is he going backwards or forwards? I'm not quite sure. Only give me a hell there, Frank. Onto the breaking markers, into Sassel Corner. And it is a Ford versus Chevy battle here for third place on the road. The Mustang sandwiching that Cheval. Jonathan running a little light. So is Barna in the background. Closing down now because this battle is starting to heat up up the inside. Are we going to see a move? Yes, we are. Thomas Faulkner, what a great drive there. Just shoved it up the inside and said, I'm coming through. Has the toy got the drive down the straight? Or is Faulkner going to have it? Let's have a look and see in the background. There's one and two coming through. Third place should be Rollings. And it's side by side through turn one. Not easy to do in these big cars. Yeah, you know, stopping them down here must be a real mission. And they side by side all the way around. I mean, these guys are giving each other space in that, but still playing hard. What will they do in terms of uh, adjusting the brakes compared to what they used to run in the, in the original format? I'm, I'm not sure what sort of bias and that sort of stuff these guys are running, um, but they've probably upgraded the discs to something maybe out of a current production car, like a, a BMM3 or something like that, but I could be corrected there. So as we get to just over the halfway mark, it's still Mark the Toy, Henny Krenovalt. Swapping paint, hopefully not literally, but uh, figuratively. And he's really smoking up those tires. He wants all that power down straight away. Well, he gets the straight, he's onto the straight, he's on the inside for turn four. This should be enough to get ahead of Detoy. Detoy looks across, he sees the big 43 car. He's not getting in through though. No, thank you, I'm coming and I'm holding this. This is my home track, mate. You're gonna have to work harder to get past me. Henny Krunewald, multiple South African champion when it comes to V8 format. So I think he's used to throwing big cars around. Oh, what's happened to the Cheval? The Cheval's gone missing. Uh, the two Mustangs are now three and four, and it's uh, a change-up. No, Falkland are not able to make that change-up. Brian Rowling's with a bit of problems. Frank Copping with a bit of problems, too. He's on the sideline there once again in the Renault. But the Cheval has gone. That's a massive, massive loss to this race. A little bit further back, we're looking at some Dices going through the field, some Coopers involved here. Yeah, the Mini Cooper going at it with Manny Cabrita and his Alfa Romeo. It's a 1965 model. Right ahead there, it looks like there's a superb run there from Jerry Spahns in the Arboff. It's an awesome looking little car, isn't it? Right, so onto the front end on the final lap, and which of the Mustangs is going to win out here? Can Brian Rowlings keep Thomas Falcon at bay? More importantly, what's happened to Henny Krunewald? He's gone missing. Henny Krunewald had a problem. He slowed up on this final lap. Hope he's still going to remain in the top 10. But here comes the Mustang battle. Brian Rowlings leaning it out at the moment, and it's, uh, well, it's one of your fellow uh, journalists going at it here. Can he do it? We'll have to wait and see. Pushing hard, isn't he? Yeah, Tom's Tom's going hard. I think it's his third race out, and he's really trying to get up there with the big boys. And Rollins has been racing forever. If I was in this Cooper, I'd be worried. <laughs> Look out, Scott Rayner. Here comes the Battle Royal. The Biscayne is going to take the victory. The Mustang Battle is going to be won out by the Lucky Strike car of Brian Rollins, but only just because Tommy Falconer right on his tail. The superb drive from all three drivers. Looking forward to seeing what happened with that uh, Plymouth Fury of Henny Krunewald, though. They did finish up on the lap. We'll have to wait and see for the results. Great day for the first heat. A little bit further back, battles continue right the way through. You see the action does not stop in the Etana Legends of the Nine Hour. A couple of cars still to come across the line. In fact, the number one car of Gary Stacey is just going to hang on ahead of the 135 of Vic Pichi. 135 is the Alfa Giulia Ford Cortina winning out there. There you can see Henry Krunewald eventually finished up in eighth place. Just ahead of the Packers, Trevor Tuck in seventh, Andy Turlow in the Austin Cooper in sixth. But Mark Dottori was the man to be. Moving on to the big bangers once again. It's the pre-66 Legends of the Nine Hour. And this time it's a Lucky Strike Mustang that gets the drop into turn one. Ryan Rowlings leads out, but watch out for Henny Krunewald coming from behind. And Barnas got the jump in all the V8s and the little Anglia, look at that. Oh, around the outside of all those V8s, the Anglia just says, thanks for coming. Zimbabwe at the front end of this field. 
Whoa, what a big drift there. Big spin out there for Jonathan Petoy. The Chevelle is now going to be at the back of the field. I wonder if we can get that car up there. You'll have to wait and see. And the CCs come into play there, and Varna drops back to fourth in two corners. Fortunately, that was the end of Jonathan Detoy's race. He finished up on the sideline, just nursed it all the way back into the pits. But the battle at the front is definitely just starting to heat up. This is lap one, and already Henry Krenwald is up to third place. Just showing the difference in power differential between these cars. He may even sneak up on the inside of Faulkner and steal that second place away. He's worried about the Biscayne. The number 27 car of Mark Detoy is the car he wants to catch. As they come out of turn seven, the Langley now is dropping down to fifth place. Hassling, Brian Rowling's in the Lucky Strike Mustang, looking for a way up the inside. Can he make it stick into Goldbogen Corner? No, well, he has a look and a little clip of the curb. The man from Zimbabwe, Denzel Barner, is not giving any inch to these drivers and saying, well, listen, you might have the grunt down the straights, but I've got the handling in the corners here. So it's uh, pretty much even Steven when it comes to this kind of racing. Now, onto the inside. Henny Krenovalt's on the right side of the circuit. He realizes he hasn't got the drive just yet, but he's so close. He is very, very close to getting past this uh, battle at the front. And what a drive so far. He's up to third, possibly second, as they come onto the back straight. Hoping that the Chev will get a little bit of a drive and allow him to go flying on the inside. The Plymouth Fury at full flight. Look at this thing. Oh, it's just shaking all over the place. How do you keep this thing under control? It's close to like, what's it, about four tons of vehicle? I would guess so. I mean, that thing's a massive, massive car. Makes the Mustang look small. <laughs> exactly. Four tons, and Henny Crenoir is throwing it around like a go-kart. As they get up onto the top into Sassel Corner. Now he has to find a way past Thomas Falconer. What a drive so far from this man. He's been at the front end almost all day, and he's back there again for the second heat. But this time, he's got a multiple champion in front of him and a multiple national champion behind him. How do you keep them at bay? I wouldn't like to be in that seat, let me tell you. Not I'm with any sure cruising not at this pace. I don't think he's even thinking of their credentials. I think he's just out, I'm going to win this no matter what. That's the way to go out, I suppose, eh? Hey? Yeah. Go no, big or go home? No brain, no pain. <laughs> exactly that. Right, across the line and complete another lap. Falcon up the inside. Can he make it stick? He can. But he's not going to have the outside line if that Chevy keeps it all together. Detroit ran a little bit wide. That might have cost him a bit of speed. And yes, we've got a new leader. <laughs> Even though he's braking late and locking the wheels up. Falconer gets to the front of the race for the first time here in the second heat of the Atana Legends of the Nine Hour. But further back, the battles continue raging. And it uh, looks like it's copping Turlo and Tuck at each other's throats. Number seven car, that is Sean Cabrita, the Alfa Romeo, Julieta T.I. Closing in on the back of Sean Packer in the Alfa Junior. So these guys having their own little battles right away through the field as always. There's minis, Fiat's, Alphas all thrown in. And uh, all in with a great chance. Andy Turlo has had a superb day in the saddle. He really has pushed hard. He's looking at a top six finisher. If he can get ahead of Trevor Tuck, maybe in a fifth place. The 146 of Jerry Spahn's going through. That's the R-Bath. Oh, problems here. Henny Krenovalt slowing down dramatically. The Plymouth has blown something again. Sounds like he's Sounds battling like for gears. Yeah, yeah, he's yes. battling for gears there. This is a proper dice. I mean, the Dauphin, Mini, and Alpha just on it. I mean, and Andy Turlo has probably been around longer than these other guys have been alive. He's been racing, you know. Exactly. So uh, Andy Turlo in the Austin Cooper going head-to-head -head with Trevor Tuck and Frank Copping. But he has another battle that's starting to pick up. Gary Stacey, Craig Collier, and Vic Peachy. It looks like the British Racing Green Cooper there is uh, leading out on this battle so far. The number one car, remember, that's the man they got to all try and catch, Gary Stacey. He had a great 2009, that's why he's got that number one plate. And they all want that one for their car for 2010. He's got the jump on the mini now, Stacey's in front. He's opened up a bit of a gap now over Peachy too. Big Peachy's also got ahead. So it looks like uh, Peachy wants to close that gap down. The number one is uh, Gary Stacy onto the braking markers and uh, coming to the closing stages. Remember, they've got, uh, what is it, two corners? And three corners and one lap to go for these guys. Just behind them looks like it's Manny Cabrita. This is where it's meant to look, just all these manufacturers, the sun setting. This is South Africa and Joburg proper racing, you know. This is how it was in the, yeah. the good old days, as they say, huh? Yeah. In fact, it's not uh, Manny Cabrita, it's one far far. That's Brett Packer. All of a sudden, he's in with a chance, and uh, but he's getting a bit sideways. He's got it wrong out of two corners. Back to the copping battle. Turlo just ahead of him. Trevor Tuck in the Alpha. Andy Turlo, as we mentioned earlier, this is Trevor Tuck. We're on board with as we go through turn three. He cuts it very tight. Andy Turlo will know to try and get the drive. He's only got one lap to do it in, in fact, half a lap by the time they get to turn four. 
This is Age of Corner they're heading up towards. Oh, and the arena looks like it's at the inside of the mini this time. Oh, he looked no, at the inside, but he wasn't quite there. <sighs> Trevor Tuck working hard at that wheel, having to uh, double time it through there, as you see. Fighting a little bit. Turlo now. Good drive out of turn four. Up onto the braking markers, but it's not going to be close enough. This man has dominated at the front, though, and he's going to take his maiden victory. A magnificent drive from Thomas Volkner. And the man from Sunday Times eventually takes a victory in the Atana Legends of the Nine Hour. And this Mustang is now a big threat for championship contention at the end of 2010. Mark Dutoy way off the pace, but in second place, Denzel Barner there in third in the Ford Anglia, all the way from Zimbabwe. Brian Rowlings and Trevor Tuck, your top five. Three meetings and you're a winner, well done. I can't believe it, Roger. It's such a great feeling. Hey? Um, you know, I kind of had like a bit of a disappointing first heat. I wanted to do better. And uh, yeah, I just came out here and I thought, right, I have to do this. I'm going to go for glory. And uh, yeah, I stuck it out. And you did stick it out. And passed him coming out of a corner, not on braking. Actually, accelerated into the corner when Mark went a bit wide there. Because that Chevy goes, eh? That Chevy is very, very, very quick along the straights. Like, you know, I often struggle to keep up. But, um, but so does the, the Ford. The Ford, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I went for the gap, and I just, I just went. And I thought, right, I'm not looking back. I'm just going to go for this, and yeah, it all worked out. Tana Legends for the uh, nine hour pre 66 production cars as well. And this is going to be, this is some of the heavy metal of South African motor racing. It's a real heavy metal. Wait till you see them uh, off the uh, NASCAR scene. There it is, a Galaxy in the front. There's a huge entry of these motor cars. Uh, we've got 22 of these cars and sideways. Getting a bit of a wobbly. There goes Jonathan yeah, Tatoy. He's learned from Saul. He must have learned from Saul. It's a handful, and he's got his brother on the inside. We've also got Jackie Schechter in this race, and a Chevelle, which Saul reckons, Fanamever reckons, 
is the best of the NASCAR cars, these big American V8. It hauls. He won down in Cape Town this car as well. Right, it's boy, does it come out of look? I love the car spring at the back of that uh, yeah, Alexi. Yeah. And that engine, how big you reckon? I think it's bigger than seven liters. I it? think it's about that, eh? It is very thirsty. It needs a big fuel tank. It's very well driven, not only by Sorrel, but John's at the toy. Very early on the brakes. Don't forget that angle. I mean, look at Denzel Barner. It's unbelievable. Down from Zimbabwe, comes down from Bulaway, comes with his family, makes. Oh. He got side swiped there. Yeah, right, that was Thomas Faulkner. He's the. Uh, motoring man from the Sunday Times and the Times newspaper and he's certainly driving to very good effect in his motor car. Here they come now and uh, Mark De Toy is looking for his brother in that big galaxy. There's one of the Daytona Beach uh, Chevs, that big Biscayne Chev. Look at that, fair lane. The Chev's not as big a motor. There's Falcon in the Mustang. That's a later Mustang than that one. That's the uh, Brian Rowling's one. His son also drives it. And look at the little giant killer, the blue Anglia of Denzel Barner. Now Denzel's good on the brakes. He actually cracked a disc in Friday practice, but uh, worked through the night and got the car ready and back out there. No, oh, he's good. I mean, he really is good. They all get into it and get the car ready. But here's the Galaxy now. It's the Yank cars at war. And Thomas Falkner's when he came up from sixth of good. Jackie Schechter scored, but what? Seems to be okay. He's going to get back in the hunt. That's a very hot Chevelle. Never win NASCAR racing, that model. But it's certainly very effective on our circuits here in South Africa. Faulkner's making a move. Going to try and go around the outside of the tour. We come to the halfway mark of the race. Sunday time at the times. He's certainly putting what he knows about motoring to good effect. He came from nowhere. That's his godfather's car, right? Yeah, and it looks really small compared to those... Uh this bigger American ooh. muscle, but ooh, when he's on the outside, and that's hairy, that's 160 k's an hour. He was, I think he kept his foot down there and then he started to lift it just about now. Yeah, I think he's still off the gas. Oh, I think he forgot there was a right-hander coming through. <laughs> it was a long straight. But he does go. I got hand at Thomas Faulkner. K arrived at the uh, David Piper meeting uh, and uh, really made a name for himself. We wondered who that boy is, and suddenly he was there with all the big boys in his uh, Mustang. Yeah, and the Galaxy's getting defensive here. He's having to fight off the Biscayne. It's obviously uh, not just to show this. These guys are really going for the win. It's a 65 Mustang. He's got Rowling's uh, a little bit further behind. He's got a 64 Mustang. You see the difference a little bit later. So it's the two brothers. Jonathan, the younger brothers in front, and then that handful of a Galaxy. That crowd love it. And does it bring people to the circuit to see the motor racing? We've got Plymouth's come along as well, and Studi Bakers and the whole Tutti. Here we go now. He's late on the break. He seems to have... Quite a lot of acceleration out of this uh, Chevy, eh? Yeah, I'm not sure what the, the weight difference is. They're probably a half both a, ton. a couple of tons. But, yeah. you know, take a bumper of one, it probably weighs less than a Mini. Coming up in Paul Rotherham in an Alpha GT, that yellow one there. We've got a couple of laps, two laps to go in this race for him to do something. His best, look at it, leans right over the tires. You can hardly see the tire, but they handle well. These are not wallowing big American cars. These cars are set up to go racing, and they get around here very quickly. In fact, they're doing 1 minute 16, which is quick around Swat Corps, if you know Swat Corps at all. Right, he's looking for a place to pass. It's not this time. He's just working out where his brother's going to go. They have raced so many cars. These two, probably the most experienced pilots we've got in the country. He's going to try around the outside on the brakes. As he comes down to the final corners, he's going to work for him. Maybe slingshot in the inside. They've got a lap to go in this race. He's going to try it. No, he hasn't got it. I think that Galaxy has got more steam. Well, seven meters, it should. It was a, a Bobby Oltoff uh, car, this one. The Galaxy brought it out to the nine now. It was fantastic to see a big American car take on all Europeans. Here's Frank Copping and the little Renault Dorfing and Trevor Tucks right on his start. Alphas, wherever you look, we've got Alphas, but that Renault, oh, they Yeah, sure. those, that Renault's really quick. I'm not sure what's underneath that, but it's but really quick. But you can see Trevor's good through the corners. This Alphas set up as well, yeah, he really can, pressuring the Renault. It is, uh, and here he comes. He's putting the pressure on that Frank Copping car. Now, that Renault, little Dorfing, goes way back into the uh, oh, I 60s. I think the pressure was a bit much there for Frank. Yeah, he went yes. off. Just keep the pressure on. You see the little uh, snake on the thing? That's the uh, symbol of the Milan, which Alpha, of course, has got in his badge. There's Alphas everywhere you look. They keep the flag flying. They've been wonderful racing cars, and they never look any older, I must say. You can get the parts for them. Here we come, 150 meters. Now you're going very late into that corner. Here's Frank Copping, and there's the uh, Streepy lookalike with uh, Sean Cabrito. And then we got, uh, is that Colin Grieg? That's Stuart Grieg and that one. And I Andy, Turler. Andy Turler behind him. Behind him, yeah. He's got a racing green. He says there's a lot of British racing greens. That one looks a little bit different to me. And he's going to take him on the inside. One's in Austin, the other's just saw a mini. Maybe a Morris mini. Yeah, I think it depends which garage you bought it at, how they <laughs> got the name. Well, Andy's been with mini so long, and with Renault's, in fact. Right, here's Denzel Barner now coming through, and uh, Jackie Schechter back in business. Got a lot of power. And Trevor Ducks 
got shot off the Frank Copping car. Rothingham's coming down in that Alpha. Here comes Striopi now with uh, Sean Krabita. Final corner. And how long have they got to go? They have got one lap to go, and it's all going to be over. So you Frank's get to really coming back at Trevor. That Renault's got legs. The Lena, Renault's got legs, and it's also got wheels that stick at impossible angles. <laughs> the camber he's got on those cars. Right, what's Mark got up his sleeve? He's got to beat his brother. The older brother's got to be. They're both in banking, by the way. The father, of course, owns the circuit. Peter Joy put so much into historic motor racing. He's going to try and end the break. Going up the hill, here's Trevor Tuck now. A little bit further back, he's the line fifth overall. He's got copying right on his tail. That little Renault goes around corners. Eh? Well, and I think Trevor's used to pressure having raced the Fiat's in production cars. He knows what it's all about. So. Oh, he does. But here we go. Mark's going, going for it. He's got him on the inside. Who's got the power coming out? They're going down a left-hander down to the bottom corner. It's the Galaxy he's got. He's got a better position. He's going to go around the outside. He can't do it. He closes the door, does Jonathan in the inside. Now he's going to use the power of that big Ford Galaxy to take the flag from Henny De Beer with Mark Tatoy just behind him. It was one and a half seconds between those two motor cars. Have a look there. In eighth position, Stuart Greig got the better of Andy to load Colin Ritchie, all in the mini, so the battle there was won by Stuart Greig. Second part of this issue there, right, this is the last race of part one of our coverage of the Execuline Historic Tour. The next coverage will be in a week's time. This is the Heavy Metal having their final race on the program in the uh, Itana pre-66 Legends and also production cars. Once again, it is Jonathan Atoy with his brother on his tail and the Barna car, Denzel Barna. Oh, the, it's, ugh, the little angle has gone a pity. And we're in on board with Jackie Schechter. Now, this car's really got legs. It's a V8 there, Chevelle. And look at the way it takes in those alphas, they see. Yeah, and I mean, Jackie can drive. He won the Barber Dodge Series in the States, I think, finishing ahead of Montoya a few years back. In my book, Jackie Schechter is the fastest of all the Schechter. He is incredible. He was uh, deaf all his life. In fact, his brother Thomas, the Indy driver, came 16th this year at the Indianapolis 500, paid for his operations. And he's got most of his hearing back. Fantastic, eh? And he is flying. He flies in a motor car. He can drive anything. Single-seater saloon car. We're going to hear a lot more of Jackie Schechter. I think his, uh, bro his uh, father's also going to get into the sort of racing. It's lovely to see these guys. They certainly don't lose the message at all. I mean, they're so quick. And they were quick down at the uh, Hun Rupert uh, yeah, down event. At front, eh? yeah. Yeah. Looks like Tom Falkner's got his legs back after his hairy moment in the race one. <laughs> yeah, it's done to Jackie Schechter's in the picture now. Right, it's Falconer, then we got uh, the brown rolling car, original car, colours driven by Basil von Roy, now lives in Australia. That three's gone, it's still the Galaxy in front, but I'm sure that Mark has got plans for this car. He's got to find a way to get past that Galaxy to sneak through. On board with Jackie again, got brown rollings ahead of him. Jackie comes down that hill, he gets it sideways. I've never seen this big car get going sideways around the corner. Got to take it easy, he's got massive power to put onto the road, take it easy, otherwise you spin. It's the same thing with the Mercedes, though. you haven't got that grunt out of the corners that some of these lighter yeah, cars I think are. what he's really battling with, their skinny tyres, and getting that thing on such oh. a tight line out of that corner, oh. just wheel spins if he gets on it heavy. Uh, uh, Sorrow van ever likes driving this one the best, he says it flies a lot. As we said, never did NASCAR racing, not like those two front cars. And that original Mustang there of Brian Rowling still holding station just behind. But Falconer is starting to look good. He's starting to sum up the, uh, the toy boys ahead of him. Jonathan, the younger, Mark, the older brother. Here's, uh, I must say Thomas has really come on uh, very strong since he entered racing in what, January, February. Yeah, I think his debut was the, the Piper weekend in January. So he's really got, got on form fast. Right, you can see Jackie's brakes squirming there. He's really pushing that thing as well. It's lovely to see. He's spectacular. I mean, he was very good. He was good in V's, Fords, overseas, did well. And he certainly should have had a future in overseas racing. But, of course, sponsorship comes into it every time, so I haven't got the talent. And those American cars are not wallowers. They are well sorted out in the suspension department. Here's Jackie again. Uh -oh. I think that's the power to the skinny wheels problem all uh, over again. It's got massive power going down there. We're talking five, six hundred horsepower. Or about 450 kilowatts, right? We uh, hello, Mark the toy's got in his inside. It looks like it's all over for for Jonathan in the red galaxies. He goes up, he defends his line in there. We need all the room now. He's got to get the power on. Don't spin it coming out. And Falconer is moving in. Yeah, I think the two big cars are tripping over each other, and the Mustang's just closing in on Blimey. the back. One mistake by those two leading cars. Here's Andy Tolo. He's got Strepi behind Sean Kubita. Andy's still, you know, Andy's probably the fittest driver in South Africa. The I mean, he goes cycling in the Alps and all sorts of things. I've said that before. But he's such a car enthusiast and drives that car well. He's in his 60s too, eh? 
I think I'm right on that one. Have a look at that uh, Striopi leans over. The little uh, Austin Cooper, of course, difference between that and the Morris Viner Cooper, I think, was uh, the, probably the strings on the boot or something. <laughs> very little and a badge. But here he comes. Striopi's in the picture. That was driven by the Peterson brothers very well. And coming in for the kill is Jackie Schechter. Despite his spin, he's got to get past a couple of these cars too. Now, he comes down that hill in a spectacular fit. And uh, Denzel Bonner, hello. Marketers are getting spectacular too. <laughs> Oh, and that's even more spectacular. Oh dear, that's a big motor car to stop. It's a two-door galaxy, didn't see too many of those in the country. The bonnet's open there to get the cool air away from the motor. So he's lost a few places, that's pushing him back a bit. He'll need to fight up if he's going to even get a third position. Here he comes. Oh. Rubber on the road. Three laps to go, he can still do something. On his tail he's got the um, Brian Rowling, so he's about a third position. Kept ahead there, Brown Rollins in that original car. And Trevor Tuck's also putting in a very good performance in the Alpha. The, the Renault doesn't seem to be around to bother him this time, so he's chasing the Mustang. And Trevor's got a lot of experience. He's got a nice attitude to racing, too enthusiastic, wants to do it, and really pushes on as hard as he can in that Bellina. Bellina stands for saloon car, in fact. So it was an Alpha name, Alpha Romeo Bellina. And Brown Rollins looks very much at peace in that motor car. 10 k's of this race left now with Mark de Toy in the front and uh, Falkson is closing. Yeah, he's really going up close. I don't think he's worried with the, with the two cars before it was so much wider. So now he's got a bit of space to get around, he hopes. Right, it's not far to go. We are on our way to the flag at the end of this lap. Now he's got about just under two kilometers now in this race. And it's uh, all gone the way of Mark de Toy. There's the third car, is the Galaxy still after going off the road in that final corner of the lap. And Brian Rowling's lovely to hear these big V8s. No, it's brilliant. The I think that's what half the reason people come to watch racing is all the sound. South Africans love V8 still. A lot of young people have still got to get into V8s. Lovely to have big American horses under the bonnet idling along. Here he comes and not going slowly either. Jonathan Trotoy giving this uh, Galaxy a big workout. And then Rowling's. And then we've got Trevor Tuck. He's done well. He's kept uh, Jackie behind. We're going to hear a lot more of Jackie, I think. Uh, he's going to get other cars to drive to. Yeah, and no, I think he really enjoyed it and, and the whole Franschuk weekend earlier this year. So he's getting into historics. And, and Franschuk, funny enough, is the first time he ever drove with his father in a car. You know that? Oh. He went out doing the, one of the racing cars. McLaren, I think, is the first time. Right, the flag is out there for Mark. He's going to be happy beating his younger brother. And right on his tail was Mr. Faulkner. And it was only 0.5 of a second at the flag. And uh, third was Jonathan, he kept third the head of Brian Rollins, Trevor Tucker, good performance of the Elf and Jackie Schechter came home in sixth. So Mark, you took revenge uh, in these results on your brother who won in the first round. Yeah, we had a, a fantastic dice. Um, I saw that he was starting to struggle a little bit with the brakes and then I just saw coming into the, the pit straight, he locked up a little bit and then I knew that was my gap. So I took it and uh, didn't look back. I didn't. And who was behind you? And Thomas Faulkner caught up quite nicely, and she was with two laps to go. I thought, you know, there's a real fight in my hands. The last lap, I managed to bulk him a little bit coming out of turn two, and then uh, it was plain sailing from there. <laughs>
Coming up in rapid motion classic today is part two of the Executive Line Historic Tour with racing from the three states. We feature big American saloon cars, we have sports cars and single seaters in a series that is brought to you by Executive Line Motor Insurance and its associate sponsors. We are once again at the Grand Prix circuit between Welcome and Odendahl's wrist at the high speed circuit that has hosted World Championship Motor GPs. There are cars here that have uh, been designed and built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and were all raced here in South Africa. First up on our program is the Executive Line 366 Legend Trans Am cars, and they're going to be over eight laps. There's 13 cars that practice, but only 11 have made it to the line, but still some very competitive cars out there. Thomas Falkman is going to be the one to catch, though, and I think Colin Ellison and Anton Roth will be the two guys giving him a good run, but it's great to see Jonathan Detoy out in the big Chevy Biscayne. And, of course, he's borrowed his brother's car and saying he's going to look after his car very well and hopefully take on this Faulkner Mustang. It belongs to his godfather, funny enough. Thomas Faulkner is the motoring editor of the uh, Sunday Times and the Times and a very fine driver. He arrived at the meeting at Swatkops in February and suddenly started to take everybody apart. We didn't know where he'd come from, but he's certainly a very competent driver. There's Colin Ritchie in the little mini. So Sean Cabritas in the uh, Striopi, that Alpha. And there's a wonderful little car. It's now 1,000cc Fiat Abarth. It's a 600 car. There's Colin Ellison. And that Alpha certainly can get amongst those V8s. And he's having it out with Anton Roth. Roth around the outside looking for a way pass. Can't make it stick just yet, Roger. I think it's going to be tight between the two of these boys. That Mazda Rotary engine going to take on the GT Junior. Colin Ellison, basically, he gets out there on uh, almost every single occasion and races almost every single race. He does. Well, the ones that he, that he qualifies he'll, for, anyway. He'll almost wear that motor car. Here comes Anton Ross. Up from drag racing, coming to road racing this year, and has done very well. The little R100 Mazda, and keeping the Mazda fans very happy with what he can do in that motor car. But look at the handling of that Alpha, and that's one thing that uh, Colin Ellison can do. He can make Alphas go around corners, stop break and really go well. He keeps the flag flying for Alpha, giving that Mazda a full go. On the inside there, holding on to his second position as Thomas Faulkner starts to get away from him. He's lapping about two or three seconds faster than them. It's pretty interesting to see that the uh, Biscayne hasn't been able to stick with the, the Alpha and the Mazda. Jonathan throwing it around in the background there. You can see him getting it a bit sideways. We saw Anton Roth get a bit sideways too. They come down into turn one, completing another lap now. Ross not finding a way past Ellison just yet, but he's giving him a really good run for his money as Falkner starts to open up at the front end. He certainly does. And uh, Ross, have a look how well that Mazda handles it. It's a labor of love there, preparing that motor car, but Ellison keeping the Alpha in the front there. That little blue and white Alpha has done great things in South African motor racing. And there's Ross now. Sounds good, that little Mazda. Rotary engine and as reliable as the day's long. Getting a bit sideways, you can see the circuit is pretty uh, dirty out there, so these guys are going to have to watch out for uh, grip on the tyres as they come down to the toe of the boot and head towards Coca-Cola Corner. This is going to be tight between these boys as they come out. I don't know if that Mazda's got what it takes. Moving a bit back, looks like Cabrita has got ahead of Colin Ritchie in the mini. He has, and that, that strip there, of course, was raced by the Peterses in three and six hour races at Marisburg and Grand Central way back in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Great little alpha. You can see the different badges in the front of those alphas, those shields there, the different uh, configurations they have on the various alphas. And Alfa Romeos still keep a lot of this historic racing line. Here's the long straight, 800 meters, slipstreaming, and uh, Roth decides it's time now to pass Ellison. He comes through now, through this fastly. You've got to have a big heart to get through here without lifting, and neither of these drivers lift at all. Ellison looking for a way through, but Roth now found his lines. He's not going to let him out, break him into this corner. And this is the second last corner as they come in there. Ellison looks at the inside, but Roth's had the door shut. I think it's just a matter of time now before uh, he tries to close down onto Faulkner. Faulkner seems to be slowing up a little bit. Maybe he's just taking his time, biding his time. As we go into the back straight, you can see the Arboth in the background. And that is going to be hassled right to the line. It looks like Manny Cabrita just behind him. Now, that's actually Elvin could see. She's from Swatkov's having one of her first drives in these cars. That's uh, Kazi could see his daughter. She was a teacher before, got into motor racing. She's the national navigator now with uh, Evan Hutchison. And she does very well and is having one of her uh, outings. She's only started racing this year. Gary Stacey in the front there. In the days of the 50s and 60s it was Cortinas like this or before that Anglias and Escort. Here's the little Spahn's car. Jerry Spahn's in this field. It is immaculate. There's not a drop of dust on this boat. He's very proud of it. Must spend his life 
uh, preparing this motor car. And there's Alvin Kutti going very, very well indeed in that Alpha. Yeah, she is. Manny Cabrita behind her as they cross the line to complete another lap. You can see she's closing down on the Arboth. Oh, Ellison runs wide. Oh, big time. Oopsie. Well held. Only just a little bit, but look at all the rubbish that he pulls back under the circuit rod. That's what's concerning. As soon as uh, you go offline here, or if you get onto the dirt, oh, he's got a puncture. No, he's got problems with the front suspension. There are no big problems there. It looks like that wheel has actually come loose. This overworked Alpha is starting to try enough. Have a look at that. It's all gone. Half the suspension, the wheel, the disc, the whole lot have gone. As Colin, now, I haven't seen him pull out of a race in many, many years, Colin Ellison. That's uh, most unfortunate. But I think that Alpha is just proud enough. Well, you can see just how, how rough it is on the outside of the circuit. If you do go off, you do, you're going to do some damage. Speaking of damage, looks like Jonathan Detoy's got done some damage too. Oh, he's not going to be happy about that. And more importantly, I don't know if Mark's going to be too happy about it. I think he's got diff trouble. He's looking underneath at the diff. Jonathan, looks like you got a problem here. Yeah, I've got my brother's car in the Biscayne. I said to him I'd treat it gently and be nice to it, but uh, I think I broke the diff there on about lap five. So you take over your brother Mark's car, and you've got to go and tell him that you've broken his car. You'll be very impressed. Oh, maybe I should just apologise now, brother. I'm very sorry. <laughs> that was said with total conviction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was like, whatever. <laughs> anyway, Anton Roth starting to close down on Thomas Faulkner. Hasn't been able to catch him, though, Faulkner, in that Ford Mustang. Absolutely perfect race. From start to finish, I don't think Roth has got enough, even though we're onto the last lap. He's going to be, uh, he's going to need to find something very special to catch Thomas. He's lapping actually at 154. Those are big times around here in these cars that have done service over 30, 40 years. Here he comes up in Gary Stacy. Nice, he turned out uh, Cortina. That's uh, Thomas Faulkner going very well. And the Sunday Times back him in this. Nice to see a newspaper and publication actually backing their motoring edit. And he certainly brings in the returns. He's fantastic in this motor car. Seldom puts a foot wrong. And spends a lot of time preparing this, this car, actually, and practicing and sorting it out. Z111, very, very hot little Mustang around the circuits of the country so far in this uh, Executline historic tour. Anton Ross, well, unfortunately, Ellison out of the race. So he's had a quiet second half of this race. It looks like he's just going to nurse that uh, Mazda of his all the way to the line. That, ma that uh, Mustang sounds nice, but big power, that big V8. Here comes Ross now. Listen to the Mustang. You can just see a real American V8 engine. Here's the rotary engine, R100. That'll keep the Mazda fans happy. This, these Mazdas all over South Africa do a great job, and the performance always belied their size. They used to say their 1200cc is a little bit bigger, and they did well. Cabrita now closing up in Jerry Spahn's. Alvin Kutzi's lost a bit of ground there. They're going into their last lap, and well into his last lap is Thomas Faulkner. And I think Alvin went off the circuit a little bit and had to come back on and rejoin the issues in the background, you can see. So a small mistake from her in the closing stages, but uh, the Arbath hanging on. And Jerry Spahn's Manny Cabrita should finish up exactly as they are on the road. We're waiting for the chequered flag to come out now for Thomas Faulkner. He'll be the first man to cross the line to take that chequered flag. He's going to be out doing the Mazda Coupe R100 of Anton Roth. Uh, so this race, eight good laps for him, here he comes now, he's still sending along, doing 154s here, starts to floor, flagman's waiting, and uh, a nice win there for Thomas Faulkner, very hard man to beat in this convoy, and Roth, only those five seconds behind at the flag, so a nice win there for Faulkner, ahead of Roth, Cabrita, and then Richie, Stacey, and Jerry Spahns in the Avoth field. Not a lot of competition, might I say. No, it's actually been a very uh, uh, poor turnout in, in terms of my class. I mean, normally we've got uh, my, um, a Chevelle out and the Biscayne. Well, it was here, but it had a, a diff problem, I think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys haven't actually turned out. So Next up is the 30. themselves, And especially this one-hour race was great to actually watch an endurance race like it. And all the tactics came into play and everybody was actually able to you know, have a good race. Back at the International Grand Prix Circuit Pekisa between Valkum and Odendorf. This for the second part of the Rapid Motion Classic uh, program here today. This is the pre-66 Legends again. Of course, the man to beat. It's a small field. We haven't got Colin Ellison. He couldn't get his car going again. And uh, it's going to be Thomas Faulkner to beat. But there's some good racing going on down the field. Falcon out in his own and into the country. All right, you've got to take into account, watch out for Adrian McCall. He had problems in the first heat in his Alfetta, but already coming through the field like the hot knife through Buddy. He's got past both the Cortina and the Arboth, so I think he might be able to run with Falkner. 
That uh, little Alfa Romeo definitely has got to turn a pace around here. And uh, if he gets up to the lap times that he'd like to be doing, he'd like to be doing sort of the two-minute bracket. They were doing 59s in the last heat. And I think it's going to be a close battle between him and Falcon if he can get there. Absolutely. He's got to get through the field first. Absolutely. And the good thing, he comes from Northern Ireland. So he's uh, a top bloke, of course. Ah, oh, to be sure. you got Matiri, Maloney and McCaw all in the, <laughs> in the same place. <laughs> Just have a look at those Alfa badges. Here's the Rita car in the front, it's that long, they've sort of made that the big design feature of the modern Alpha, so they give it a different treatment all the way. Anyway, a good dice game, of course, come through from the back in that white tail feathers, way down the 70. The big thing we forget about this, Greg, these cars, some of them are 30, 40 years old, you know, like Colin Ellison, he got his wife to drive halfway down from Joburg after his first race, he picked up the spares and tried to get that Alpha going, he couldn't make it for this race, and the other one, toy, of course, was that diff trouble, just didn't have another diff to put in, so these cars are being pushed to the limit here at a very quick circuit in fact yeah they don't mess around Rog. a lot of people think that it sort of hold back because of the age of the cars and because of the the value of some of these cars some of them are valued way over their price that you would have paid for them in the 60s and 70s Absolutely. there comes the alfetta looking for a way past the alpha and there it is done and dusted so I think he's on the hunt for that uh, mustang he's, and he's flying along the same boy he's doing laps there two minutes and uh, and one second so he's right on the pace there with thomas falkney in fact Right here they come, we don't see uh, Anton Roth in this either, he's gone a missing as well, so the field is a bit diminished there, we had eight cars start this field, it's an eight lapper once again, and that Kubita car, let's face it, that was a wonderful car, they called it Streepy, a lot of people have made uh, replicas of, this, of that motor car in fact. Right, McCaw's looking very good, that GTV did well, and of course later, in his later life, it became a three litre. And uh, it became the South Africans were actually the first ones to have three litre GTVs racing. And the whole thing from Alpha, the big thing that we always said, we want to be the fastest production car in the country, got it from Auto Delta, and was out there to beat the BMWs and Ford Sierras, which it did. In the hands of uh, the late, great Nico Bianco, if I'm not mistaken. He was, right. And uh, we also had uh, the likes of uh, uh, Abel Dolavera driving. These are all great Alpha drivers, a wonderful period there racing. So it's Alpha's uh, t second and third. And Colin Ritchie in that little mini. Now, people think they've got some hot rocket uh, cars on the road here. Now, that little mini, mini will probably blow a lot of them off. These cars are still flying along. Yeah, absolutely awesome. Then you've got the Ford Cortina, the Arbath there, and Alvin Katia still hanging in there. Having a great drive in an Alpha GT. So uh, very nice little uh, consistent driving there from her. Much better than in the first one. Her lap times have improved, so she's definitely getting to grips with the Pekisa Freeway. Um, just to repeat, uh, of course, her father was fa famous. Uh, Cassie could see rally driver, off-road champion as well. So it's in the blood. The genes are there, certainly. And she spends her life at Swatkov. She's a secretary at Swatkov. As we say, she was a teacher before. Just loves being involved in this whole motor racing scene. A well-identified alpha as well. And another lady from uh, Belfast, but uh, that's Belfast and Mpumalanga. That's, <laughs> that's actually quite right. So we've got McCaw there in second position, Alvin, both from Belfast, different parts of the world. Isn't her, isn't her dad the, the godfather of Belfast or something? I'm sure he's he the could, mayor or something. He, he, must, he owns everything there. You know, he used to fill up in his service station the way down to Lowfield. There's Manny Cabrita now. So fly, oh, I was just going to say flying along on the top. Flying along and then going for a bit of farming too. Uh, I must get to him that that Alvin's ahead of him. But those cars, I mean, those uh, Bellinas did, did great work. Stacey's staying ahead of the little uh, Fiat Abarth, a little 600, fantastic little motor car. And it's getting along quickly. Where do you get a Fiat Abarth? I think it's gone to 1,000 cc's now, holding off Alphas. It's good stuff. This is what it's all about in Historic uh, Tour. Exactly line Historic Tour. But Kisa Freeway coming to the closing stages now. We're on uh, about a lap and a half to go as we get to this section. Still no changes there. Gary Stacey from the Arbath of Jerry Spahns, Alvin Katsia, and of course Manny Cabrita at the back. Right here they come through and they're flying through here. You just got to lift a wee bit, touch the brakes before you get onto that long straight of 800 meters. Go down there now. They start to floor it as they come down the straight towards us. It's Stacy. Looks at his mirrors. That a bath is still there. That must really get to him, you know. I mean, he's got a he's got a Cortina, man. And here's a wee a bath sitting on his tail and another Alpha behind him. I think it was the same kind of situation that you had in the nine hours when the mini started to catch all the bigger cars in the rain and stuff. They couldn't believe it. They <laughs> Where did these guys come from? And the Renaults. The Renaults are <laughs> the big ones. The R8s and R10 Renaults, they were fantastic in the rain. And this dust still carries on and spawns, closes up as they get into the tighter bits, loses a bit on the, on the straight. Well, then could see certainly learning a craft very well and doing a good job there uh, navigating for Evan Hutchison in a S2000 rally car, which is no slouch. She said it's very fast. Things happen very quickly indeed. 
Right, we're into the last lap. They're into their last lap there now as the lead will be falking away around the circuit. Here Looks like Alvin's going to go up the inside here. Look for a way past Jerry Spahn's. Can she make it stick? Yes, she can. Classic move. Oh, perfect. Textbook move into turn one. She's definitely been watching the coverage here on Classic. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yes, she goes. So she's done a good job there. Just waited, bided her time. Out into the country. There's the old control of the old famous circuit that we had here. And here's the uh, second man in the, in the race. We're on the few corners to go. Oh, no, he's leading. Thomas Faulkner's gone to the side of the road. He's got problems. It's a, a half a lap to go, and he's out of it. And he was going for the double today. And there's the new leader, which is uh, McCraw. Adrian McCraw from Northern Ireland has gone to the front. Well done to him. Yeah, superb bit of driving there. He was hunting that uh, Ford Mustang down. It just took a while. A small error there, and I think some small problem on the Ford Mustang. Doesn't normally happen to Faulkner. He's, he's got a bomb-proof car on uh, yes. most occasions. Uh, and unfortunately, today, it hasn't worked out. Well, they push, as you say, these fast circuits, you know, and these AG motor cars that start. And the other thing about them, Greg, too, the tyres are getting a great grip. You know, they were they're using wider rubber or different compounds and you find the suspension and steering parts are taking quite a hammering on this sort of surface you know they get a tremendous grip right he's going to have his first win he's ever had in south african motor racing here's adrian mccaw coming for the flag in a 74 fetter looking very good and very original in fact as he gets the flag for his first win and he finishes there he's going to finish ahead of sean Krabit. he's quite a long way behind him yeah, it's about 35 seconds between oh. first and second place there, but it would have been a bit closer if Falconer hadn't uh, pulled onto the sideline. Thomas Falconer will still get a, an opportunity to get onto the, the top eight, but second place is going to be Sean Cabrita, and Strippy is coming through in second. Oh, looking good, eh? Looking pretty original. Here's Sean Cabrita through in second. Colin Ritchie will come through in third position in the little mini, little blue mini. Here he is, just full, foot flat as he comes through there now. Sounding good. Those minis really put a lot of guys on the way to success in world rallying as well. And they're coming back into World Rally as well. I believe in the World Rally Championship next year, we're going to have two works, Mooney, so that'll be awesome to see. And the, oh, Alvin! Oh, no. Speaking of awesome to see, you don't get better than that. No. Getting it sideways. Two Who's corners one? to go. No, <laughs> so oh, no, don't worry, I know how you feel, Alvin. I know how you feel. <laughs> okay, there she is. So Gary uh, Stacy hangs on to his spot there ahead of uh, Jerry Spahn. And that beautifully kept little uh, Fiat A bot. So Adrian McCall wins that one ahead of Sean Trebita. Colin Ritchie's coming through as uh, Alvin could see he recovers to head home Manny Kribita in that Alpha. He's always out there as the Kribita. Sean's the son, Manny's the father. And as they come to the flag, that's the end of uh, this uh, 366 and Trans Am race. So McCall beats uh, Kribita for quite a margin. Colin Ritchie, Stacey Spahn's Alvin could see, and Manny Kribita. So Adrian, it would be enough. Anyway, more action now from some heavy metal and other production cars in the 366 Legend production cars and Trans Am racing. 23 cars, eight laps, 34 k's of action coming out. And nice to see Jackie Schechter's back in one of Peter Toy's car and having a Schechter back in South African Motorsport just seems right. As away he goes in the front. And very nice to see this Swart Cops based formula moving on Master Kyle Army and putting on a really good show. We've but got Fords, Dave, we've got Chevs and Plymouths and Mazdas, Mercury's, BMs. Fantastic to see it. Mini Coopers, Alphas, and Fiat's in the lineup. As we go on board there with uh, Penny Krunovat, he's behind Thomas Faulkner. He's the motoring editor of the Sunday Times. And that's one very hot Mustang, that one. It is. I must say, I was getting a bit seasick there in the fury, so I had to stop talking for a moment. But here we go. And that's uh, young uh, Jonathan Detoy in the Camaro. That's a very sorted car now. But this fury, a very large engine in a very large car. And Henny throws it around to good intent, I've got to say. Henny is one of our best all-rounders and quickest in the country. We're on board Davi Olafia now. He's used to driving Sabaris. Funny enough with Henny, but he loves the, sh the big Chev, the Chevelle. He also races a Toyota, turbocharged Toyota. So these are very confident, experienced drivers with now. And those aren't just wallowing American tank. Those cars can really get down and race. Well, of course, they've, uh, uh, Peter Detour has been very clever in recreating some what are really old NASCAR cars, like number 13, the Chevelle, was the Smoky Unic car, 43, the Fury, a Richard Petty numbered car, yeah. and uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. Brave stuff to go down this hill in one of those flat out. Absolutely. Just lifts about these. Jackie Schick, the second there as he comes through the bowl. Oh, he's losing it. Jackie's losing. He's one of the fastest ever Schick. To and make a the error. phenomenal avoidance there by Mark sure. Detroit. Absolutely. Moves up a spot with Falkner on his tail in the Plymouth Fury. 
Then we got Darby Gifford. Anton Ross, a little R100 coupe, a two door, going well. Here's that uh, again with Jackie losing it. Jonathan de Toy goes right, he made the right move there, as coming through there is Thomas Faulkner. Here's uh, G G Gary Stacy, then it's Vic Peachy, and then we've got uh, Scott Rainier, the little little mini. It's fantastic to see those little minis racing this week. Well, Scott, of course, has built this car over the last two years, and every cent that he's ever made has gone into it. He's got this peculiar crouch style. You'll see him again, virtually resting his nose on the steering wheel. Fiat Abarth, another interesting race car to have in this series. One of the South African motor legends in front, that's been Morgan Utwasa, a Ford motor dealer of the year, does a fantastic job out in Rainfontein. And then we've got the others coming down the road, and they are, as we say, not dwelling. They are being pressed into service just as hard as those cars can. The weight on that left front wheel must be enormous, eh, Dave? That is a real motor car that's turning. But here's the dice uh, that's developing. Anton Ratz just sticking to the tail of the Chevelle with Darby Olifier, but he just cannot get past. Even if he did, he's probably get, gonna get knocked into touch with the way Darby's getting sideways there. Andy Tolo came through leading. There is a little Fiat Eugene Coast. He was down to drive a Forenza, but that's the Fiat he used to drive before. Sponsored the series at one time. The blue car is? Colin Ritchie. And he's going like a rocket as well. And certainly a beautiful car, of course, Gavin Ritchie's son, who's built some beautiful cars over the year. Jackie Schechter back in action now and making up for lost ground after he's Let's spent. just tell you about something about Jackie. He was born deaf, he raced motocross, he raced, he was a champion Formula Ford. He was the Barber Dodge champion in America, he came back here and he's had an operation financed by his brother, his uh, cousin, in fact, in America, and now Jackie can hear. Unbelievable what he must be hearing for the first time, I think. Well, certainly in that car, yes. Here's Anton Ratz still harassing uh, Darby Olafia. Even Anton Ratz getting a bit sideways, but... <laughs> It just happens that as the car in front goes sideways, you find yourself going the same thing. Right, here he comes. Listen, does he lift? Listen. Just taps it off just, just to settle touch, it down. Just a touch. As he comes into the bowl. Roth is flying along in that. No, that's the Fury ahead. That's Henny Krunewald ahead of them. And uh, that's right. Still glued to the <laughs> tail of that he's car. He's doing a fantastic job there. Right, and here's uh, Richie now. He's got uh, Eugene Close right on his tail as well and going very... Ooh, losing. There must be oil down there. All these guys are just going in there too quickly. I think the circuit was a bit slippery and a lot of gravel and dust been thrown on it from some off-road excursions. You can see this there in the background, Tien Stelunga coming up in the red Cortina GT while the dice, and that's the Chevelle. Oh, Finally, yeah. Anton Ratz makes his move. Nearly collects Theo from Furin in the process, he's and Uri Sana right. has another avoidance. <laughs> but he's back and he's on his way. Causing havoc there. There's uh, Henny getting through that corner, gets it under control. Darby sees him and the thing loses control. Anton Roth just goes across his bound. All the, in the meantime, Jonathan Detoy still sitting in second place to Morgan Root. What's your favourite? Uh, it's still my Chevron B8. Although I must say the white Camaro, the one I'm driving today, is certainly climbing the list. It's just, uh, it handles well and it goes well and it's pretty reliable. And your older brother, Mark, what's he driving? He's in the red Daytona, which I normally drive, uh, so just to confuse him. Pass it down to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pass it down to him. Yeah, I, I just I prefer the white Camaro, so with the combination of categories today, I couldn't drive both the white one and the red Daytona, so he's taken over the red Daytona. Is it with the two of you so competitive? How do you decide on the cars at home? Do you do it around the dining room table or what happens? No, I don't, I don't really know. Generally what happens is my dad, you know, when he ma makes a new car, he says, oh, no, you'll drive it. And it's, we don't really have a debate about who's driving what. It's so kind you of chose the right dad. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. In the meantime, Darby Ulafia has got it all together. He's got Justin Ladner, looks like, ahead of him. Sending it down there, there's the BMWs ahead of him too. So Darby's just got to watch you going through his court. He doesn't want to lose it again. Goes very well in the Chevelle. Saul van der has also raced the Scott Swat Corps and down at Cologne. Yeah, in fact, a, a fleet of these big V8s, of course, at Swat Corps, but uh, very difficult to drive, I think. And I imagine quite difficult to stop as Darby Olifier does another sideways demonstration for us. Wonderful stuff here. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Anton Ross right on the tail of that plum. I should imagine those tyres are just cased on that big Plymouth Fury. And Roth looking at such a tiny little car, that uh, rotary engine, flying the flag. A lot of Mazda fans around the country racing these cars. Look at it, it could almost...
last race of this program is for the pre-66 legend production cars also train them car ben morgan who the man to beat tears away in the lead and have a look we've got willie hepburn in the lineup here as well in that famous camaro well we hope roger of course this time you saw in last week's program that uh, he blew up the Opel record. Let's hope he's not going to have problems with the Camaro, which he did have for non-starting. But judging by the smoke, we're in for another oil-soaked race. Oh, here we go. The BMW just at the back of the field. I see Theo van Puren's having that with Rudy Son as they come down the road towards us. Here's Jonathan de Toy. That's in his Camaro. And I see the usual suspects lining up behind him. Anton Rath having his... Uh, mounting his attack on the back of the Plymouth Fury again. But nice to see Hepburn there, but that oh. smoke's looking very ominous, but you can't beat a dice between Hepburn and Morgan. Now that's the ex Bacali Rapini car, which in fact Willie uh, built, and it's been a successful car. A bit of smoke at the moment. Maybe you need a bit of a, a work over there. But Ben Morgan, who that car prepared by Roger Taylor, is going to be hard to beat. The old Mustang has come to the fore, and it's uh, aging Mustang, a 65 Mustang, and they get around the circuit around the, in the early 50s, so one minute 50, and Willie trying to sneak on in the inside. Here comes Peachy. And uh, Scott Rainier and Chos in the uh, Fiat Coupe. Looks like the same dice are outlining as we saw uh, Gavin Stacey go past in his uh, Cortina GT, leading yeah. the pack again. Same mob again, or having it out once again. We need Andy to learn there as well. Jerry Spahn's coming to Little Fiat. And there's a nice shot there, that little Sprite. Yeah, that's Josh Dovey. He broke the E-type, went home, and brought the Sprite. Missed the race, but they let him run win this one. And that looks like Ishmael Boloi, and that I think that's the number we pick up from. Look at Willie Boy, this is sensational stuff. These two have been enemies since the days they started motor racing. Well, enemies and friends, I think. Yeah. Enemies on the track, friends off the track. And they give it a full go. And they love motor racing. They don't mind touching motor cars. They can give it a full go, these two. Here's Jonathan de Toy. Then it's, uh, as we say, Thomas Faulkner, soon to be seen in a Spider T70 Lola. Henny Krunewald, we go on board with Darby Ullefier, looks ahead of him, there's the Roth car, always in amongst those American V8 is the little rotary Mazin, what's that, about a 1200cc in capacity? Well, originally, and uh, of course the rotary gives it a little more capacity, there's an equivalency, so it gets up to about 1800. And Willie laying a bit of a smoke screen as he comes down there, seems to be coming out from under the car, not the exhaust system. Yeah, I think it's in the gearbox or the back axle, the same problem that befell the record in the saloon car races earlier, in the first program, I think he needs a new mechanic. Then. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, as long as Willie can hear that motor charming way in front, that big V8, let's face it, he's been a fantastic driver of V8. He's also raced those little Mazdas as well. But here he's going. He's trying it on with Ben, trying it inside, not working this time. They're giving you, you can't come in and out of corners much faster than this. They get it right, sliding to the outside, onto the curves, and Ben knows he's right there. I don't know if you can hear him, but he uh, can look at his mirrors and there's that blue car. Well, his mirrors are filled by the Camaro because now the Chevelle is uh, mounting an attack on Anton Ratz. Some slight damage to the back of uh, the Mazda, unfortunately, in the saloon car race. He took a little bit of a tap, but he's got another one of these cars at home that he's bringing out, a uh, left-hand drive car that he told me he would like to race with his wife to race. And here's the two BMWs, Uni Sani in front of Thea van Fruen. Uni Sani is the financial, uh, Sani is the financial corrected BM. Thea van Fruen is off the sales manager at BMW and these two are having it. Two different departments having it out. It's Uni Sani, the right-hand drive, 2002. There's the BMW colors of Thea van Fruen. Used to race that little Datsun to good effect. And he's gone particularly well, won his class in the first race. And Henny Kroenewald is flat out down a mind shot. Well, he certainly, I think, uh, replaced that uh, left front tyre we commented on earlier. Yeah, a lot of weight goes on that. And the BM's now closing up on the back of Darby Ullifier, who's, uh, if he hasn't got new tyres on, I think he's going to find a few problems later on. Thank you. Well, right here, these two absolutely flat out through this new right-hander. They just lift and then floor. It's a new corner. Actually, the Superbikes got that uh, corner change. Eugene Coast coming down on his own. Here comes Stacy behind him, Vic Peachy in the Alpha. Alpha celebrating 100 years this year. Fantastic car manufacturer, of course, well known for their sports saloon. Yeah, I can just see there the door flexing as uh, Peachy takes that corner. But look at Scott Rainier. He's not going to give up. He gets into that crouch. The nose is on the steering wheel, and he's going for it. He is, that. That car's in beautiful, Nick. Here comes the leaders now, Ben Morgan, who's still got Willie Hepburn. Willie knows nothing about the smoke and doesn't care. Listen to those V8s. Here comes Jonathan Detoy as well. Another Camaro. It's a later model. 
It's looking fantastic. Right, and Thomas Faulkner in that he won his class the first race as well. And he is going very well. Only started racing this year is Henny Kroonewald. Lovely to see his American uh, saloons out there. And then we've got Anton Raft, and he comes through in that little mares. They're going well. But I don't know how Henny's driving that. I mean, it is such a handful around Carl Army. But the Chevelle also has got Bratz in his sight, and the BMW battle in Bond behind now, and Fuhrer now in front of Ulisana. Here we go on board with Darby Ulafia coming to the famous the Goodyear sweep now. It was a sunset corner, and this is why they call it sunset. As you come around this time of the afternoon, sun straight in your eyes here. He's going to get him on the way into this corner. He's going to edge him out. Titan's not the correct line, but it's certainly effective one. Comes through, he leaves him a bit of room, and then just closes the door, and Darby Ulafia's moved up a spot. Yeah, I think if he tapped him, he would have punched him into four ways. So uh, <laughs> better he uh, gave him some space there. Here they come up the hill. They just rocket up the hill, these V8s. There's a big heavy motor cars. But Anton Ratz is not giving up. No, he, he may doesn't. have been passed, but he's sticking with it. He's sticking with it. And there's the BM battle. And back in front, Olisana. Yeah, and Theo van Furen's got to make another plan. He always seems to go right on his tail through here. Titans it now. They go neck and neck as they come down the mine shot. A terrifying. As Willie Hepburn has cried enough, he's gone to the pits. Not a successful day, really, for Willie here at Carl Army. As the toy now goes into second spot, he's got Faulkner a little bit further behind. But those two are settled in the front, and Henny is giving that car a work over. Or is it the other way around? Well, I think he's uh, need a rest, and but after this one. Still the Chevelle and the battle of the BMWs goes on as Uli Sana sneaks through the inside. I suppose they don't want to bump each other or it's uh, twice the cost of parts that the BMW spare has been on Monday morning. <laughs> Not for them. Right here's Stacy, there's Peachy, there's uh, Scott Rainier coming up the road. That Mini is not giving away an inch around the circuit. He really tries hard. Breaks late, tries to take him outside. Look at this. Peachy's wise to that, takes his normal line. Of course, I think, Roger, that Julia, one of the most beautiful Alpha saloons of all, and uh, nice to see a lot of them being raced these days. And a beautiful gearbox it had as well. Right, here comes uh, Henny Kurovat. His fourth position has is in doubt, because Darby Ulithi is coming up there. Henny seems to be loafing. I think just what you said, those tires are getting close. That big heavy, it must weigh two tons easy, 2,000 kilograms. Now he's idling his way around, and Ulithi is starting to appear. Let's see, there he is now. Oh, and he means business. Starting interview, Anton Roth seems to have tapped off a bit. I think he's quite happy to be in that position. And the BM ba battle continues. Thea van Furen has found his way through with Uli Sani in, on his tail. Well, I wonder who's the senior guy at BM. Is there something going to happen in the boardroom on Monday morning here? <laughs> right, Darby's closing on Henny. Here comes Roth up the hill. He's a beautifully turned out medical. When you think these are cars that were built and raced in the 60s, 70s, and way back in the 80s we're talking 30 years old 40 year old motor cars and they get around the circuit probably faster than they ever did in the past well the 2002 of course uh, winner of the european touring cars in its day right it's the final lap they're coming out of the bowl now up to this very quick sweep tap off floor it here he comes through ben morgan Hood, and very proud to be deal of the year the four deal of the year out in ranford Day in his uh, section there here he comes ben what a driver, what a record he's had in South African Motorsport. Packed up for a little bit there. Back trouble has come back and just loves racing that Mustang. Another win for Ben. So he takes the first class. Thomas Faulkner is going to take his uh, class in his uh, Mustang as well. Thea from Furen takes class C in the BM. And uh, Anton Roth in class D. Thomas, first year looks like you pulled off the championship. Right? It has indeed. Hey? I came here, I think, six or seven points ahead of uh, Mark Patoy. Uh, he wasn't here today in my class, so I came first in both heats today. And so, yeah, if my calculations are correct, then uh, it's mine. And all this great motor racing brought to you by Execuline Motor Insurance people and their associate sponsors. And the next and final round of this historic racing will be at Swatcourts on Saturday the 16th of October.